the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hi, everyone. It is a Thursday night. We're live here on News Channel 5. Plus, I'm Rory Johnston in the chair for Open Line tonight. We hope that you are staying safe and socially distant as we continue to work on the rebound, as we're calling it here at News Channel 5. Truly, we hope you are staying safe and you're doing well. Well, tonight we are going to talk about an important topic. It is a controversial one, and that is school vouchers in Tennessee. Are they right for Tennessee or not right? And we have people on both sides uh, of this issue to talk to us and share their opinions. And of course, we wanna hear from you. That's why we call it open line. We have open phones right now at 737 plus. So please join us in this discussion. All right, a couple of guests with us. Uh, first, we want to introduce uh, Arif Panju from the Institute for Justice. He is with us tonight. Arif, thank you. And Andy Spears, the publisher of the Tennessee Education Report. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. And this is an important topic this week because as you both know, there was a ruling in Davidson County this week regarding Governor Lee's um, school vouchers program. Uh, Ann Martin, a Nashville Chancellor, a judge here, ruled that uh, the Education Savings Account Program, as it's called, is unconstitutional. Uh, certainly a blow to uh, one of the governor's top legislative items, uh, but the governor immediately and supporters said that they will uh, definitely fight back. They disagree with the decision. So, Andy, let's start with you. Um, why are, is this program not good for Tennessee right now? Yeah, well, so I think one, I think it's really important to understand the judge made a very uh, important and, and astute ruling, which is uh, the voucher law as written impacted only Shelby and Davidson counties. And so the other uh, 93 counties were not impacted by this law. Um, and so that she found that it violated the, the home rule amendment of the Tennessee Constitution. So because education is a shared responsibility. Um, so that's first of all just on, just on her ruling but second of all if you look at um the body of research in louisiana and ohio and indiana and state after state uh where there have been studies uh it turns out the vouchers actually don't help kids get get better and in fact in math especially uh students lose ground when they accept a voucher so um we're, be, we're sending tax dollars to private schools mm -hmm. uh that don't do any better and in fact sometimes do worse than uh the public schools and when you're talking about it's really important to real, remember this when you're talking about shelby and davidson county you're talking about schools uh that have charter schools that in, in Davidson, Shelby County, they have School Choice Day, they have the Achievement School District, they have the I-Zone uh, in Shelby. So there are lots of public school choice options that are funded by public dollars. Um, we're just not in a position to be spending uh, public tax dollars on private schools. Well, what do you say then, Andy, to, um, to the, all the parents who've already applied, um, who are excited about maybe having more choice and a chance to send their, their kids to a, a better school because a lot of these uh, underperforming schools are in the two largest districts, which is Shelby and Davidson County. What do you say to them? Yeah, that's well, that's fascinating because so far less than a thousand people out of 160,000 students in two districts um, have even indicated uh, an interest, and there are about 300 or so applications uh, that have been approved. So. Uh, there's been lots of marketing by groups like Americans for Prosperity and other groups uh, that are not here in Tennessee that are spending lots of money to get people to send their kids to private schools. And the bottom line is parents send, seem to be happy with the choices they have because there's not a, a, a mad rush to to apply for this voucher program. There's been lots and lots, Governor Lee and uh, these outside Coke funded groups uh, are attempting to generate interest and mm -hmm. there's the interest is not there so um there are not a lot of parents that are that are super excited about this there are i would say to those parents there are plenty of public school choices and charter school choices in both nashville and in in memphis um and you know the cap this year was five thousand we're, we're at less than 20 percent of even people mm -hmm. being interested in this so um the parents in the districts, and this is why the Home Rule Amendment is so important, important in this decision, um, seem to think that they have plenty of choice as it is now. 
Right, and you are prepared. You know that there will be an appeal, right? Uh, absolutely, there'll be an appeal. I think it's uh, impractical, I think, uh, to, to proceed with the program this year. You know, what's interesting about this whole thing is uh, the, the voucher scheme was started slated to start a year from now, so in the 2021 school year, and the governor and, and some of his supporters and some of these privatization advocates uh, got in a hurry, and I think that's one of the things that caused them a problem. So, you know, I don't like vouchers. I won't like them next year either. Yeah. But uh, getting in a hurry for vouchers, I think, caused them a huge, uh, huge problem from a legal standpoint. Uh, they might have avoided that because they knew this was going to be challenged in court. Uh, that could have all been sorted out over between now and 2021. Uh, and people like me might have been on the other side saying, you know, we're going to have vouchers and I don't like it, but this is the way it is. And instead, we're at a stopping point. Right. Okay. Let's go to uh, Arif now. Arif, uh, why do you think um, this program is necessary and will help students? Great. Well, thank you. Um, you know, the, the one thing that I just want to mention just off, off the gate is just with the case, all school choice cases start in the trial court and the trial judges get to weigh in and the appellate judges get to weigh in and ultimately uh, the Supreme Court of a state weighs in. And in state after state, school choice programs, just like TNC's ESA program, have been upheld um, in, you know, in the face of legal challenges by those who like to flow every single dollar the state wants to invest in children's education into the government school uh, monopoly on public education. And so I offer an alternative view, which is viewing education through the eyes of the individual, through the child's uh, eyes. Uh, which is consistent with the way the Tennessee Constitution is framed. Uh, we are not to elevate school systems above children. And so the one size fits all public education monopoly in Tennessee does not work and it did not work. And the General Assembly recognizing that and exercising the power of, of the very people that this program benefits um, agreed and they passed the, an education savings account program. And thousands of children in Tennessee are, are denied a quality education daily, and we ought not to dismiss good solutions. Uh, across the entire country, uh, you know, educational choice programs abound. Uh, in mm -hmm. states, including Tennessee and Washington, D.C., parents can opt out of the public school that they're assigned to by the government based on their zip code, usually, and send their child to a private school that meets their needs. In other words, um, instead of forcing parents to send their children uh, into school systems based on zip codes, parents are given a choice. And these programs uh, allow parents to give their child the opportunity to pick the option that fits their passions, right. their interests, their goals, their learning style. But in and fairness, so in this Arif, case, it, let me just ask you real quick. And, uh, parents, you say, are given a, a choice, but the choice is not to go to a different public school. We're saying now we're, we're taking public school money, and this is what the opponents say, away from public schools and giving them to these parents to spend on private schools. Is that, you agree that that's one of the key issues here, Arif? Yeah, the key issue is whether the people uh, who you know, are the ones that benefit from the General Assembly's power in, in, in education and in exercising or, you know the you know funding educational options under the education clause the question is is the only option a public school option are parents going to be forced mm -hmm. to go into a public institution run by the government or do parents have a right which is of course they have a right and that's consistent with what the edu uh, the constitution bears out in the state to exercise a choice at to, you know pursue the educational option that best right. fits their need the money follows the child it's not for a building or a, a school system um, it's to fund a ch child's education, and parents are simply allowed to exercise that choice. So it may you know, upset those ideally, who want all the money from them. So ideally, and I'll get to you, Andy, in just a moment. I know you want to jump in, but ideally, Arif, how, how would this ESA work? It, it kind of in a perfect world, uh, give me a, an example of how this would work for maybe a family in Shelby County in Memphis. Um, they take sure. the dollars, how much, and how they would use it. Go ahead. For example, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, there's a, a woman named Natu Ba. She's an African hair braider. Uh, she is uh, you know, low income and has two children, and they're assigned to A. Maceo Walker Middle School. And this middle school, uh, a total of over 80% of the school body, uh, the student body, is below grade level, uh, which means it's around 17% that are actually at grade level. So her sons are at a failing school and, and are getting repeatedly bullied. They're of African descent and they're, they're getting bullied. She wants to use ESAs to send both of her children 
to a private school. She has zero option other than that school. Uh, she has to work each day as an African hair braider, has, is a, of limited financial means. And the ESA pilot program in Tennessee is precisely tailored to address these types of situations. And these schools uh, are not just, uh, you know, in Memphis, they're also in Nashville. And Natu Ba's son's experience is not unique. Uh, thousands of kids are in similar situations both uh, mm-hmm. uh, across the state uh, and also in these two areas. Andy, I'm going to guess that you are going to respond by saying uh, what we need is to put more dollars into that school that, that is not doing well. Uh, it, we, it needs more resources. Is that correct? Well, so, yeah. It's, Two, two things, yes. So one, um, the Tennessee Constitution says that the state should guarantee a system of free public schools, not that the Tennessee cost, that, that we should give uh, dollars to private schools. Two, um, I think it's interesting that Arif uh, did not address the fact that data in state after state after state indicates that private schools actually fail. So you've got kids uh, who fall behind in math, who are just the same or worse in language arts. So she, he's saying, well, this mom wants to, her kid to go to a better school and he's selling snake oil and he knows it, uh, that the kids are gonna do better. In fact, they're gonna do worse. And what happens is when the mom or the dad realizes that their kid uh, has been shortchanged, they go back to the public school instead of being a year behind, they're two years behind. But yes, to your point, Rory, uh, the Tennessee Advisory Commission on Intergovernmental Relations, which is a bipartisan commission, says that Tennessee is uh, $1.7 billion behind where we need to be in public school funding. And I would love to have voucher advocates like Arif come to Tennessee and tell us uh, that uh, we should be po- properly funding our public schools. And what we don't see is the advocates of, of private school education uh, calling for full funding, calling for the equity that kids at that middle school that he's citing need. Uh, we are way below the ratios on counselors, on nurses, on teachers. We're not properly funding our schools. We're 45th in the nation in school funding. Uh, on the day that Tennessee makes a 100% commitment to funding schools and finds that $1.7 billion, a reason I can have a fair debate about maybe uh, we need more choices. The other thing I would point out is uh, groups like Arise and other outside groups have been spending thousands of dollars to market these private school snake oil schemes to families, and the families are not buying it. Less than 1,000 people have even applied. Roughly about 300 have been approved. Uh, there's not a mad dash out of Metro or Shelby County schools because there are charter schools, there are achievement district schools, there are school choice days uh, in those districts. And so uh, there are a tiny number of people who may even be interested in this. And I would say, I would caution the mom that he's talking about, the African hair braider okay. who has this this middle school situation that, uh, the, the 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 track record in other states is really bad and her kids might actually be worse off at whatever private school all right with that gentlemen i know we've got more to discuss and we appreciate you being here we have to take our first break just a brief break we've already got one caller on hold and a reminder to our viewers if you'd like to call in open lines right now at 737 plus questions and comments are welcome we'll be right back with more open line after this